Hey guys, how's it going? Anthony Mutraja here, back with a new video lesson for you all. Today I want to talk about rhythmic phrasing and um, one exercise in particular which I use a lot to develop my sense of rhythmic phrasing and independence when it comes to playing grooves and solos. Um, and I also watched a very recent video of Mark Juliana, phenomenal drummer, giving a lesson on Drumeo Edge. Drumeo is a great channel on YouTube which provides a lot of good material for drummers, but it's also great for bass players. So definitely check them out. And um, so the idea is to take what Mark refers to as a theme in his lesson. Um, unfortunately, on the bass, we have to deal with harmony and melodic concepts too, not just rhythm, because rhythm alone cannot take you a lot further. Um, so I decided we'll just take a pentatonic scale, five notes, A minor pentatonic, A, C, D, E, G, okay? And um, I'm going to briefly talk about 16th notes and then triplets, eighth note triplets, okay? Now in a 16th note grid, for every quarter note, you have four 16th notes, right? But since it's five notes, what happens is your resolution is delayed. And wherever you start is where you're going to end, in the sense that if you start on a downbeat, you're going to end on a downbeat. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, etc., etc. Now what we're going to do is, there are four possibilities of playing these five notes in a 16 note subdivision. Okay, so it's very simple. All you do is move them up a 16 note every time. So you can start on beat one or one E, and then one N, and then one E, uh, and that will bring us back to B2, and you can keep moving it up. So really, in a 4-4 in a four, four time signature, if you think about it, um, you have 16 variations of this five note phrase. Okay, so I'm going to put on a click, and I'm just going to go through the four of them. I'll play each of them twice. My metronome is at about 100 BPM. Actually, I'll put it about 90 okay now each of them why it is the same idea, I have a very different feeling to it just because of the rhythmic placement. And this is just straight up 16th notes. Okay? So the next thing we're going to look at is 8th note triplets. So 8th note triplets would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? And same thing, I'm going to start on the first triplet and then move it up to the second triplet and then the third triplet. Okay, so I played them each twice in the end I actually played them back to back with a weird spacing. Okay, so I'm going to have these on PDF files so you can actually visually see what I'm talking about. Um, now the next thing I want to talk about is trying to improvise this way. Okay, now let's say I make a conscious decision that every time I play I need to play five notes evenly spaced, doesn't matter 8th notes or 16th or triplets or quarter notes or quarter note triplets, it doesn't matter but we have to use just 5 notes, right? So the pentatonic scale is great that way because it confines you plus um, the phrase in its entirety shouldn't have more than 5 notes. Now sometimes when you're practicing this way, 
it can prove to be a challenge because you are you have limited yourself so much out of all the options you have you're just taking five notes now and then you can expand into other scales or just regular scales even like one of the things i like to do for practice purposes with the click this way is taking eighth notes right so you can take a regular c major scale in eighth notes but instead of starting on the downbeat we move it up to the e okay so instead of going instead of that we do three four Now, I remember the first time I tried that, it felt so awkward and my feet were tapping and my head was bobbing all the way. So, try not to do those physical acts to feel the pulse. Don't tap your feet. I know many musicians who tap their feet so loud on a stage, you can actually hear them. Right? Don't be one of those guys. Don't tap your feet. You can bob your head a little, you know, you can just breathe with it. And just try to really feel where those eighth notes sit if you shift them up this way. And shifting them up a sixteenth really changes the feeling rhythmically and also as far as resolution goes because now it's, it's not going to resolve on the downbeat. It's going to resolve on the, the one E a bar later. So those kind of things are very important to pay attention to. right? And it gives you so much leverage when you want to write or you want to practice some stuff too. Okay, so now that is one thing. So taking a five, five note phrase or three note or four note, whatever it is, and then moving it up in a subdivision grid. And now the next thing you can do is just take a regular scale and try to cycle all possible subdivisions. So we're going to start with, I'm going to do quarter notes, then I'll do quarter note triplets, eighth notes, eighth note triplets, sixteenth notes, then you can do quintuplets and then uh, six tuplets or 16 note triplets. Okay, now I might not get this right, but I'm just going to try. So I'm just going to take a C major scale. Okay, now clearly I struggle on that 5 because it's something I haven't practiced a lot lately. And then trying to get in the 6 was even worse because I don't have the 5 down. Right, so the quarter note, quarter note triplets, 8th note, 8th note triplets, 16th notes were fine. But then the minute I had to push further from there, I fell apart, honestly. But that is the beauty of it. It's not about perfect, perfecting it the first time you try it. But it's about knowing where you fall down, where you really reach your breaking point, And then you know what to work on. As opposed to sitting down at the base and saying, okay, today I will learn this John Peritucci lick and I'll see what I can do with it. Yeah, that's cool. But it's always best, in the words of John Peritucci, a good practice session is actually finding your problems and fixing them. All right. So I sincerely hope you got something out of this. Again, just to remind you, there'll be a PDF in the description below for you to check out. 
uh, PDF of the first couple of exercises. And um, I'm sorry, but I absolutely am against tabs. Don't ask me why. I just don't like tabs. I feel like they are the worst thing for the humanity of bass players. Anyways, I'll see you guys around and see you in the shed. Peace.